Hi everyone. We will be continuing our PLC learning series looking at inputs. Now PLC inputs are one component of our PLC block diagram. The output actions of the PLC will be controlled based on the inputs. We will be looking at the digital and analog inputs that can be wired to the programmable logic controller. We will be looking at wiring of normally open push button, a normally closed push button, three wired PMP sensor and an analog sensor to the PLC. These all will be syncing inputs, so let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what are PLC inputs? The term PLC input usually refers to the physical devices connected to your programmable logic controller. Inputs are usually isolated from the CPU of the PLC through light. Now this isolation is the reason that if a PLC uh, input is destroyed, the PLC can still function. Usually the input can be corrected and a new input card can be placed on the PLC. Alternatively, the input can be corrected and the PLC input can be programmed for another input address if you have extras. Right. Now note you must refer to the specification from the manufacturer to determine how the inputs are protected. Now these input devices give the PLC information about what's, what they are controlling. Push button switches, limit switches, distance measurements are just a couple of examples of PLC inputs. Operator inputs through Human Machine Interface or HMI are also a form of PLC inputs that we will be discussing later. But it's really the physical inputs that we'll be looking at wiring and understanding. And the uh, these discrete and analog PLC inputs are the usual method for specifying the PLC itself. Specifying the physical number of digital or uh, discrete inputs and, and outputs or analog outputs or analog inputs help to determine the size of the PLC or the ability of the PLC. Discrete or digital inputs refer to the on-off or I/O type of input. And they only have two states. That's either on or off. Analog inputs we refer to a range or expression in the units specified for the device. An example would be an ultrasonic sensor, and this ultrasonic or analog input sensor can measure distance. So the output is a range that can be expressed as inches, feet, yards, etc. So the first thing we will do is look at our discrete. Um, uh, 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 inputs that we have on our PLC. And looking at the specifications here, you can see that we have on our PLC, we have two, uh, we have 10 inputs, two commons, so five points per common. And the uh, power supply per common can be syncing, uh, zero volts on the common, it can be sourcing, plus voltage on the common, or AC inputs. So that's why you see that we have 12 to 24 volt for our nominal rating, uh, volts AC or DC. So looking at the actual uh, inputs themselves, here's the wiring diagram for what we call a syncing input. So that means that our load, which appears between our common point and our input point here, say zero, we have the common sitting at negative voltage or zero volt DC, that would be a sinking load. So you're taking the load from zero and sinking it down to the common here, which is at uh, zero volts. Our sourcing on the other hand, has a positive voltage on the common and we're taking our load or input point here, which is our load between the common and that zero input point and we're sourcing it or giving it plus 24 volt DC. And then our AC, there's our common here staying on one side. So again, this is our input point. Now discrete digital inputs, as mentioned before, are either on or off without touching the button or sensor. Um, seeing an object, this is called the normal state. Now, if, a, if there's no voltage on the input to the PLC, then this is called normally open input. If voltage exists and the input light is on in the normal state, then this is called a normally closed input. Typical Start buttons, or push start buttons are normally open and stop buttons are normally closed. Sensors can sometimes be wired either way 
or program depending on the operation required for your industrial application. So if we look at the actual uh, input diagram here, where we're going to be wiring the sinking input. So we're seeing our common voltage is going to be sitting at zero volts here. So our load is between the common and the zero uh, point right here. And looking at a normally open, normally closed, you can see that sometimes they're color coded. Our normally closed are usually color coded in red and are normally open uh, terminals or block uh, for our push buttons are blue. So let's go back to our wiring diagram here and actually physically look at what we have connected. Here we go. So you can see here that we have our PLC, which is our bricks. We have two inputs. We have our green push button and we have a red push button. Now the green push button is wired to our first input here, which is zero. So remember our common is sitting at, at minus voltage, which is their blue wire. And our, our uh, green goes into our first one. Our red is going into our second one or uh, input number one. So if I were to right now, our normal state, we have, this is, uh, normally open for our green push button and this is normally closed because you can see that we have voltage already on there without anyone touching that button. If I were to select the green button it will actually turn on providing voltage to that input and you see that input now is on. On the stop button or the green or the red button if I push it down it will go now off so I break the circuit and now it shows zero on that input or off. So that is the, the main difference between those two. If I actually look at my um, meter and we'll turn that meter on, you will see that we have our negative connected to our negative supply here. And I'll take my positive. So under normal operation, you can see if I hit the first input, I had zero volts. And if I hit the one for the uh, normally closed, you'll see that I have 24 volts across that load. Now remember that I'm actually reading it across the load. So from the common here to my input point. So that's where my action is here. And that's the voltage that I can see on there. Now, next what we often hear is sourcing and syncing. So again, sourcing or syncing a PLC input and the input acts as a load on the input circuit. So if a common sits at zero volts, this is a syncing input. And if it's plus voltage then it's connected, it's called a sourcing. Now, as you can see, it's just a matter of looking at the reference of the PLC input point to determine syncing or sourcing. And all inputs must be one or the other per common input point of the PLC. Mixing, sourcing, and syncing inputs on the same PLC common point will create a short circuit for the input supply and damage the PLC input. The common practice is to have the entire PLC either sourcing or syncing. However, you can mix and match. So again, documentation is very important. And most modern PLC manufacturers will have syncing and sourcing inputs. This will determine the, how the common point for the input is wired to the supply voltage. And check again, check the manufacturer's specification for wiring to ensure that this is the case. Now, often you will hear about MPN and PMP sensors. Now, the syncing and sourcing terms actually come from wiring three-wire DC sensors. And NPN and PMP refer to the the output bipolar junction transistor, or BJT, of the sensor. MPMP stands for negative, positive, negative, and PMP stands for positive, negative, positive. This is the doping material that allow current amplification of the transistor. PMP sensors are sometimes called sourcing uh, sensors because they source power to the output, and PMP sensors are sometimes called syncing sensors because they sync uh, ground to the output. Now what gets confusing is understanding the point of view. The sensor point of view is from the switch. So a load on the sensor is the opposite uh, switch point of view of the circuit. 
Now the main thing to remember is that the load PLC input is sourcing if a NPN sensor and syncing for a PMP. Always refer again to the specifications for the connection of your wiring. So if we were to look at a PMP sensor, you can see that my load appears between my black wire and my blue wire. So my, through my load, I am um, syncing this, but on my switch, which is located here, I'm actually sourcing it to the brown. So that's how you determine between sourcing and syncing NPM, PMP. And it's just a matter of how it's wired. Now, in my case here, I have a um, CK uh, series capacitive proximity sensor, and I have it actually wired. Now, it's, it can do both NPN and PMP. However, I do have it wired for PMP. So that means that I have, here's my sensor located right here. And you can see I have it going into input number two, goes off and on. And there's three wires to it. So again, my brown is my plus voltage. It's going to my brown wire here. And I have my black wire, which is my input. So that's where my input is coming from down here. There's a brown or black wire. And then the blue wire is always uh, zero volts DC. So it's going to my zero volt. Again, testing that input, if I were to put my meter on it, you would see that if I go into point number two, I get my voltage. There's my 23 volts or 24 volt. If I, un if I release it, I go back down to one volt. There's a little bit of residual voltage there. So again, very easy just to test that input, this input to see what's where, where it's connected. So again, always refer back to your manufacturer's specifications in order to determine exactly how to wire it. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our analog. Now, we're gonna be wiring a UK1 series ultrasonic sensor to the PLC. And the PLC wiring diagram on a three wire transmitter looks like this. So it looks complicated, but really isn't. The PLC is right here. And this comes again from the specifications on our PLC itself. We have a common point and we have a analog input point. And they recommend a fuse to put in between. Currently right now we don't because we just have a test bench right here. Then we have our three wires for our sensor. And you see my common sits at the zero volts right here. So the load is actually a sinking load on this sensor. And here is the wiring diagram. So again, black is plus voltage, blue is negative voltage. In this case here, the circle with the arrow represents our analog output of this sensor, which is black. And we also have a switching sensor here, which is white, which we do not have connected currently. So the black wire is located right over here on our analog input. So calling up our PLC program, we should be able to see the analog coming in. So again, here's my analog coming in and it's a constant voltage ever changing. And we've scaled that uh, input from zero to hundred representing a distance that we, we show for our sensor. So as we get closer or further away, you can see that range actually changing. And we can actually then put a meter on that input and actually measure what we're measuring for that analog signal from zero to 10 volt in our case here. And once again, if we look at our PLC, you can see here that our green is coming in here. This is my uh, green foot push button. And if I were to energize it, the light goes off, but on the PLC logic, you can see now it sees the voltage and I see that information. So when that input light is on, that means that this input here, normally open input is actually on. Again, if I 
the energizer, open it up, you can see that it now stops or um, says it's off. So a little bit of confusion and you notice that it's all messy wiring, but some of the main things to actually consider or to look at is the fact that things are always on or off, syncing or sourcing. We have analog, which is a range of values. We have discrete, which is on off. And if we look back, the other thing to remember is that everything in the PLC and in the input, it looks like a mess of wires here. However, everything is an individual circuit. So every input point, every analog is an individual circuit from one point, the common, to the input point here. So that is one complete circle. And remember, we are measuring across our load to determine whether or not we have power or not power zero or 24 volt. This is the excellent way of troubleshooting and allowing you to, to determine if that input is still functional or if the actual sensor that we have to that input is functional. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on, click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.